Before 1971, Uganda had one of the most prosperous economies in Africa and was better off than many countries of the world because of the better equitable income distribution, meaning there was an extremely poor people in the country. The country was neither socialist nor capitalist. And truly exercised then in August 1972, President Idi Amin, while in Tororo, announced that he had had a dream in which the Almighty God had instructed him to Africanize the economy. Consequently, he gave the Indian people who had been playing a key role in the trade and industry 90 days to quit Uganda. By the end of November, over 95% of the Asians had left the country, as did the Europeans and other non-black people in business and other professions. A few months later, after all the economic units from small shops to large factories had been turned over to the regime's supporters, shortages of essential commodities started to bite. Sugar and soap became luxuries, prices skyrocketed and the black market flourished. <laughs> Industrial production started falling as the new managers did not even know how to find spares or even consumable inputs. By 1974, industrial production was virtually finished. The shilling was nearly collapsing and foreign exchange was sold in the black market at several times the price at the central bank. Smuggling of consumer goods into the country was at its peak, but in the mid-70s, smuggling of coffee out of Uganda reached a climax due to the frost that hit the crop in Brazil, the leading producer of coffee worldwide. Despite a windfall, Uganda never benefited, and it is Kenyan businesses that exported Uganda's smuggled coffee that prospered. By 1979, there was hardly anything useful in the shops. A walk through Ginger, which had been an industrial town, revealed rotting factories and closed warehouses. The shops that had once been packed had empty shelves. So had clusters of matoke, sweet bananas and banana leaves. These were more markets than shops. Luxury goods were also in supply in the high streets in Kampala for the ruling class. After the fall of Amin, the subsequent governments struggled with different economic policies to revive the economy, but with little successes. I think this is a fundamental change in the politics of our country. Finally, when the NRM assumed power after 1986, they moved to correct some of the wrongs, including returning the properties that had been grabbed from the Asians, coupled with the privatization and liberalization of policies that boosted the economy. In the late 80s, the NRM government fully adopted the free market approach that is still prevailing 30 years later and has led to considerable growth. What many Ugandans don't know is that if Amin had not expelled the Asians, hopefully such devastating breakdown and a dislocation of the economy would have not happened. And Uganda would have been far better today. Today, a lot that is being done should have been done in the 1970s.